Hi guys, this is Lumi and Finistra, and today we're going to talk about a topic that was addressed by Rebecca Marie, the messenger. Uh, she sent it originally as a group uh, topic on magnetic personality and how it can happen in 30 days. But first I realized that before we can talk about having it in 30 days is we need to, one, define magnetic personality. Two, define what it is not. And three, then we can begin the process of explaining who would be a good candidate to have a magnetic personality and who doesn't have the qualifications that would make it ideal. And also for, because Michelle and I talked about this morning on the radio broadcast, is who do we know in fiction that has a magnetic personality that meets the terminology that we're going to discuss. Well, first, we're going to read the definition from the Urban Dictionary. It's one of the places we're going to read it from. Although it doesn't go into detail on the traits of their personality. There is another website that does. Um, it does here. It says here, a person who has a sense of calm, self-confidence, and authenticity, who others are drawn towards instinctually, these people are excellent listeners. The power to make anyone feel important and validated, while not always the center of attention. Magnetic personalities radiate a powerful and slightly mysterious influence, and are often extremely wise and thoughtful. Their, their natural charisma and sincerity makes them perceived as very trustworthy, and they may naturally attract followers whether or not they are eager to lead. And then it gives an example here of the girl was quiet, but confident, and others were attracted to her magnetic personality. Okay, now, that's kind of a lot, but we're going to break down the topics of the 10 traits of a magnetic personality. This came from a business website. This is just our um, part of the message. We had to cut this out because I was thinking so full pop up some spam and crap and we couldn't really easily get clear copy. This is from the Urban Dictionary. You can see why. Um, so I'm going to read you the 10 traits that this website mentions. Authentic. People with magnetic personalities are sincere. They radiate authenticity. So if you aspire to be a magnetic, you have to be real about who you are and what you have to offer. Others will respond positively to your honest demeanor and transparency. Confidence. Confidence in yourself is a, in a, is a magnetic personality. Quality, I'm sorry. If you walk with your shoulders back and your head held high, you indicate to others believe to others believe in yourself. You do not, of course, have to have the answers to every problem, but you exude the attitude that nothing is too difficult for you to handle. Eloquent. Learn to use words well when you speak. Magnetism depends not only on what you say, but how you say it. Be aware of your, your pacing your tone, and your facial expressions when you speak. Reveal your genuine emotions through your voice. And that will give, there's a couple important reasons why that's important, especially for radio. Um, next one, energetic. People who are likely to become enthusiastic when around a high energy individual. You, as a magnetic personality, need to be on the move doing whatever is needed to propel the business. Remember, this is a business from a business website, so you got to forget about that. Okay? Um, do not be content to allow things to happen, but instead, initiate actions to maintain forward movement. Motivational. An engaging person who attracts attention is one who can motivate others easily. Drive your workers to produce at high levels to live up to your expectations. 
room to inspire others through charm and charisma. Active listener, listen attentively to increase your level of magnetism. People who naturally fond of those who take the time to read their concerns and hear. Let's just read. Um, ambitions and ideas. Look directly at the person's talking. You be back in your head what is said and do not allow outside events to distract you. Well versed. Increase your knowledge to make an impact on others. Draw people to you by keeping current, um, current events so you can contend tribute to conversations, develop a really reliable base of information regarding your business so you can speak with authority with issues that arise. Optimistic. A positive outlook is attractive to others. You can be magnetic if you simply determine to keep an optimistic mindset. Employees will engage with you if they witness your bright side approach to even the most difficult situations. Imaginative. Ima routine methods Rehashed ideas should be avoided in your business. Magnetic leaders invest in creatively sparked by open imagination. Lead your workers to aspiring to produce original concepts that will attract more clients and investors to business. Sense of humor. You need to be Able to laugh about yourself at situations. Having a good sense of humor is a positive quality that will attract followers. You do not have to be funny or witty per se, but you should be able to see the humor in life and business. Now, since I was toward it oriented towards the business person, um, person, I'm going to try to rephrase these based on what I have read and how they would apply to an individual, even if you're not in business. So let's take a look at the first one, authentic. You gotta be true, you gotta be honest to who you are, what you are, what your ideas are, how you feel. Nobody likes a fake. I don't like a fake, Michelle don't like a fake. Uh, a lot of people don't like fakes. So if you're honest and you're authentic in your, in your truth, in your true personality shows, then you can get afar. Um, that's important. Confidence. You gotta have confidence in your life. You have to think of, um, look at yourself, hold a high and say, I can do this. I can succeed. I can, I see this a lot in Michelle. Um, and, um, confidence is certainly a key piece that keeps her going and me as well, but more Michelle than me. But okay, that's the point. Confidence is when you have confidence and others see that confidence, they are attracted to you because they see that you feel that you can succeed at doing something. That's a key piece. Next one is eloquent. How you speak, what you say is important. I met our radio broadcast this morning was not quite eloquent because of the fact there was a lot of ums and uhs, collateral stops. But if you look at the way we speak when we're on camera, when we're focused and we have our mindset together, you can see that sense of eloquent nature. Michelle is more of a technical person than me, but if you look at the way she expresses her thoughts, her concerns, her confidence, and her authenticity, you will notice that there's a beginning of a magnetic personality, just beginning of three still on those three. Energetic. The go-getter. The go-getter is the one that says, I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to build this thing. I'm going to see this thing. I'm going to write this thing. I'm going to talk about this thing. They research, they study, they take the time to learn what they need to know, and then they go out there after they formulate a plan and organized it, and they feel, again, the other traits authentic. And they appear to you authentic because they know what they're talking about, and they're confident because they know they have the information that makes them correct. And, of course, they speak eloquent 
is going to attract your attention to that person. So those, again, they all built upon each other. Motivational. People who are, who are a magnetic personality have a certain way of motivating other people to do things, such as maybe, for example, if you're part of a fundraising team, you might be the kind of person that gets more people to join, to put money towards to the fundraiser you're trying to do. Um, that's more of a business example, but it certainly can apply. Also, it can help for people who may not quite be motivated, like they're suffering with depression, which is very common in the mental health field. Uh, if sometimes clients just feel like they can't get ahead. Michelle is not immune to feeling that way. Sometimes I have to kind of motivate her to get out there and do something with her life than sit around and uh, that's what I do. And, of course, Michelle does the same for me. So we kind of motivate each other. Um, so now after that, we have active listener. Key piece. Now, let me explain one thing, though. When we say active listener, notice I said read and hear. Okay, now, first of all, why am I saying read and hear? Well, first of all, if you're d going deaf, you're not going to be able to necessarily hear the person. So you might they might think you don't care. Uh, that's not necessarily the case. But in the case of Michelle, unfortunately, you have a pervasive developmental disorder, which is Asperger's on top of that. And what's happening is, is sometimes her brain is a million miles away in another planet doing something. Um, or sometimes she's not sure what she's hearing. And she's kind of like, huh? What'd you say? I don't understand what you said. I Do you repeat that? It wasn't because Michelle's trying to ignore you. It's because sometimes Michelle's Asperger's and hearing loss compound the problem. But when she gets a chance and she is in a format she can understand and get through, such as reading a, a piece of text, then she is going to read it and then she's going to speak up and speak her piece. Um, in fact, Michelle and I have plenty of examples of well-versed. That's like eloquent. You need to be able to know and experience um, what you're talking about. People don't like people who um, don't really have much to say. If you listen to Michelle and I radio broadcast this morning, you would think that Michelle was the dummy. Michelle's not the dummy. The problem was, is at that point, she was kind of like, um, kind of the start to fire up on all four cylinders. And she wasn't quite getting it. She wasn't quite turning over correctly. And she was, she wanted to talk to you, but she kept, had so many things in her mind. And that's when you hear the us and us. It's because, it's not because she's not eloquent. She can speak, and she can speak well. But the problem is, is that in certain circumstances, you need to be able, um, for, especially for a motivational speaker, you will have to be able to jump out there and get right to your audience and, again, be well versed well um um uh, in what you say but the problem is is of course not everybody is going to be out there and got guarantee 100 percent efficiency but if you happen to have it that's great okay next one of course is optimistic now that's hard because you know optimism is like well when shit hits the fan i'm gonna just go ahead and, and put you know just deal with it and i'm gonna accept it you know, some people can't do that. And that's, again, this is going to be part of the groups that we're going to be talking about that will be, have a hard time to develop any kind of magnetic personality. But if you can be an optimist and not a pessimist, or how about this, a neutralist, not a naturalist, a neutralist, someone who's kind of in the middle, kind of is like not too pessimistic, not too optimistic, but rather somebody who tries to be a realist. So you might be okay too with magnetic personality because remember, optimism doesn't always mean that you're going to be funny in a sense of humor. Um, people like people who are un imaginative. Imaginative people make good magnetic personality because they think outside the box. Michelle, for example, was showing you the power supply she wants to build. Now that power supply, unfortunately, mean I can build this month. But it doesn't mean that Michelle is certainly not still thinking about the design. She is still thinking about the design and how to make it practical, inexpensive, and get enough power to spare. 
Um, she's willing to think outside the box, and sometimes she comes up with insights that just surprise everybody. And then sometimes, unfortunately, like a lot of other people, she gets stuck in the mud and she doesn't always create. But, you know, not everybody is going to be 100% magnetic. I will explain that in a minute. And the last one is sense of humor. Um, people uh, who are, um, obviously, this goes along with imaginative and optimistic. If you've got an optimistic person, you are not afraid to make some light humor of the situation around you. You're still optimistic that things are going to work out. People tend to look up to you for that reason. But um, if you have uh, the thinking that you have to be like the Three Stooges, well, uh, guess what? You, um, you're one of the many who have thought that way. And uh, a lot of people shy away from magnetic personalities who when you think of people like the Three Stooges because they tend to think that means you have to be an airhead and an idiot. No one wants that. Okay, so... Um, it's all balanced. It's just like Michelle said to me, uh, a, like a scale, like a pan scale. If you want to have enough, you know, easiness, lightness, but enough reality to make the scale kind of balance. And if you're too much like an airhead, like Melanie and the Jesse and the Biscuits, you, you ain't got to go anywhere. If you're like Major Bean, you, you ain't got to go anywhere either. You have to find a compromise where people like you, respect you, feel good about you, and that's exactly what the key piece is. In fact, let's, let's talk about that. When you have people, especially the media has portrayed a lot of magnetic personalities as people as being kind of funny, um, witty, jokingly stupid to the point where they're sappy. Those people are going to be the ones that are not going to be the kind of be good uh, poster child for magnetic personalities. Those are the ones that we call fools. Um, however, on the other hand, you got people who are so concerned about appearing as a fool that they clamp down, they shut down, they close the doors of opportunity, imagination, for example, and they are like a drill sergeant or a Rottweiler dog, as Michelle said, the Marina Messenger. They're, they're, they're staid, they're focused, but they're no fun, okay? They might be stern, authoritarian, it's my way or the highway kind of personality. That person is going to be extremely hard to convince to be a magnetic personality because they don't want to be a buffoon, okay? And the airheady ones are going to be, have a hard time to be a magnetic personality as balanced because they don't know how, they don't have a serious bone in their body. So those people are also on the extreme. They can't become sincere and serious because all they know how to be is a buffoon. So those people are not going to make a good um, magnetic personality because they lack certain traits. The uh, major pain drill sergeant guard dog is not going to make a good um, magnetic personality because he can't loosen up a little bit because he's afraid that you're going to go right over to the imbecile land. So he wants to have, you've got to find the right people where you can have just about enough fun and uh, be, um, you know. Now, people that Michelle looks up to in fiction, they have something of a magnetic personality. And of course, Michelle could talk about some of the real people in her life, too. Um, I'm going to give her a couple examples of my own. People I look up to as magnetic personality. Michelle herself has certainly got a magnetic personality. Um, she is serious, but she's also fun. If you let her have, you know, be herself she and don't rush her into something, she can be quite a, a, a wonderful person to be with. But if you push, push her just a little too hard because the Asperger's, she slams the door on you and says, I'm not ready to deal with it. That doesn't mean that she won't deal with it. It just means I'm not ready to deal with it right now. That's just where Michelle is. Um, However, there are certain characters in TV that she actually looks up to as characters, um, which has a lot of the same traits. Probably not all magnetic personalities have all of these traits. Some of them have one or the other, but at least they have at least five or six of them. The person that she looks up to the most, what a magnetic trait, um, is uh, Maggie O'Connell from Northern Exposure. 
Also, she looks up to Ed from Northern Exposure. And of course, um, and also she looks up to Ingrid the Snow Queen from Once Upon a Time. She sees a lot of a magnetic personality in that show, in that woman. Also looks up to Emma Swan for the same reason. And I think that's a good example of some of the things that she looks up to as people with magnetic personality or traits of it. Um, as far as um, the charmings go, I don't know if Michelle really sees uh, and Margaret is quite having the magnetic personality, but uh, I know that she was really, really, really close to the character of Ingrid the Snow Queen and, of course, Elsa. So you got this example of where also the other Snow Queen from the 2003 Hallmark, or 2002 Hallmark Entertainment. She was very close to her, too, and the character played by Bridget Fonda. So this is an example of people that she looks up to with a magnetic type personality. Um, like I said, she's also certainly seen people who have been, who think they're funny, think they have magnetic personality, uh, which almost border on imbecile, and she doesn't like that. She likes people who are authentic and, and, and true. I, she sees Ingrid kind of as a magnetic personality, because she is authentic. In the sense, I want to have, make up for the loss of my family has a child. I, she's like, I, she could understand. I was like, okay, because she went through it. But anyway, um, so how can you achieve this in 30 days? Well, the first thing I would believe you have to do is you've got to find out exactly how close you are to meeting those traits. If you have the traits at all. If you do, aren't you? I mean, not quite refined. You just kind of got the beginnings of it, but maybe you never worked on it if you're afraid to work to uh, advance yourself, and that's not uncommon, then obviously you are going to need to take your time to work out the kinks. Uh, originally, in case of Rebecca Marina message, your message was in 30 days. I don't think for some people 30 days is practical. I think that for some people it's no problem. A lot of people, like I said, the hardcores, like the Major Peds and the Rottweilers, are not going to be easy to uh, convinced in 30 days to how to be, how to make their personality. There's a lot of pain in their heart and a lot of misunderstanding, a lot of mistrust. And so those people are going to take a lot longer than 30 days to do it. People like Melanie and Josie the Pussycats will take long time too to develop a more sincere personality because they are, um, don't want to be too hardcore and they don't want to be too, um, so for them trying to find balances, it's like a scale. You gotta find the right balance. Once you find the right balance, you can get there. And sometimes also don't forget what also affects the situation is the person's childhood traumas and memories, which relates to something that we talked about before about negative self talk and also our upbringing. Um, so if you wanna to try to overcome all it has obviously has made a major deal to your life and has molded you you got to first of all be willing to say, I want to do this. If you don't want to do it, then I'm wasting my time. Um, and that's the truth. Um, there's so many motivational speakers out there that will tell you that you all have potential. But the thing is, is the problem is, is, do you have the potential? Do you want to do this? If you do, okay, that's not a problem. If you do not want to do it, then, well, guess what? You're wasting my time. But if you want to do it, but you're running into hardships and hard times, don't forget you can always call the mother God and say, Mom, you know, hey, I'm trying to do this. I want to become not a life of the party, not not the most the town village idiot, but I want to kind of find a, where people would like what I got to say, like to listen to what I got to say. So, but I don't know if I'm at the right, if I got the right stuff. If you could help me out to continue to build and work on that. I really would appreciate it. And she will provide it through your spirit guide. And that's a fact. But if you don't want to do that much, ask for assistance from Mother God, Father God, well, guess what? You're not going to get anywhere. Um, it, don't forget, it's just like Michelle said about um, some of the requirements at 12-step program, like you use an Alcoholics Anonymous. The first thing is, you got to acknowledge 
that you have an issue that you need to work on. And number two is you've got to have faith in a higher power. In this case, it's Mother and Father God and Jesus too. And ask them to guide you to make positive steps. And don't expect, like I said, to wake up in the morning and all of a sudden go from being hardcore, hard case to being um, miss suffer I mean miss congeniality and it can happen but it takes time to do that and it also takes a lot of uh well to make some changes in your own life. On the other hand, um if you are the village idiot and you do want to try to change yourself, make improvements to your life and make yourself better, same deal. You have to be willing to um uh, ask Mother and Father God to give you the right amount of um practice and patience and skills and it's going to take probably depending on the person longer than 30 days to do it so don't rush into it and expect you're going to have it happen tomorrow it never does by the way i want to thank you all for watching this video and of course if you have any comments to the video please do comment in the comment section below i'll even have one if you want to send me a private email it's l u m i f i n i s t r a at gmail.com if you would like to uh, reach me on Google Plus it's plus Lumi space Finistra it's L-U-M-I space F-I-N-I-S-T-R-A and of course I will read your comments I will do my best to respond to them in a timely manner and obviously if you have suggestions hey I'll listen to them I'll read them okay that's all I can promise you in life. I can't promise you any more than that. Okay? For now, peace and bye-bye, everybody.